This is joint work with uh, Alexandro Gallo. He's my colleague at the Federal University of São Carlos. And as Monty Python would say, uh, now something completely different. So I'll share some works about the history of probability. Well, we all know that probability has been used since the 16th century, but the meaning of the word is uh, the reason of a great debate. So there are three uh, main, main interpretations of the word. The first one is the frequentist one, advocated by uh, John Van, among others, uh, Richard von Mises and others, and the axioms were given by Komogorov in 33. The logicist or logic approach, uh, advocated by Keynes, Jeffries, uh, Johnson, Jaynes, and the axioms given by Cox and Carnap for the philosophy community. And the subjective approach, advocated by perhaps Thomas Bayes, Augustus de Morgan, others, and the axioms, uh, of course, given by Fla Frank Ramsey, uh, Bruno De Finetti, and uh, Jimmy Savage. So the history of the frequentist view is well documented. I believe this community is acquainted with the origins of the logicist approach. Uh, and if you are not, please take a look at James. It has a lot of history in his book. So just a side remark for those who are not familiar with the Dutch book argument. So I can ask you, how much would you pay for a ticket that pays one euro or one dollar or one hell if some random event is true and nothing if it is false? For instance, event A is Corinthians will beat Palmeiras tonight. So I, I can tell you that Paulo would pay like nine, 98 cents for this ticket, but Vitor would pay like one cent or two cents perhaps uh, for this ticket. And well, if you are coherent, uh, the prices you are willing to pay should obey probability, calculus, axioms, or almost, because sigma additivity is not implied. So if you are not coherent, I can make a Dutch book against you. So if you say I pay 60 cents for this ticket, but I also pay 50 cents for the not A event. So I can make a set of bets to win, uh, to make money betting against you, for sure. So the usual uh, rules, if you are coherent, is that th this, these prices should be between zero and one, and they should be additive. All right, so we have found two early instances of this argument, the Dutch book argument defining what we call nowadays subjective probability. The first one is a series of four articles published in 1903-1904 by this uh, French general, Jean-Baptiste Etienne, and a review paper by Émile Borel, published in 1924. So we would like to first understand uh, why the Dutch book was used explicitly uh, at the same period more or less, when the other schools were also looking for axioms, and hopefully identify uh, inspirations given by Borel and Etienne that were common to uh, Ramsey and Definetti. So some context first. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, Hubert and other mathematicians were searching for foundations or, or axioms for different areas of mathematics such as the geometry, arithmetic, calculus, set theory, and so on. Well, apply, applied probability was disseminated, but pure mathematicians were not very satisfied with the foundations of probability calculus. Poincaré, for instance, in 1896 wrote, one can hardly give a satisfactory definition of probability. And this is a book on probability. So in 1900, Hubert presented his now famous 23 open problems at the time at the ICM held in Paris. And the sixth problem was to treat axiomatically uh, mechanics and, as he classified, probability. We may say that this problem was solved by Komogorov's book 
and the champion interpretation was, of course, the frequentist one. Of course, this was a great work, great advance, but reinforced the, among pure mathematicians the idea that the subjective theory uh, was just a philosophical curiosity. Now, we know that uh, some scholars were seri seriously engaged in this curiosity. Uh, Ramsey and Defnetti uh, were work working uh, separately, and they started tackling the, the issue of how to measure subjective probabilities. So the idea was to use betting odds, that is, the, uh, the Dutch book argument. So our first character is this uh, French general, uh, Jean-Baptiste Etienne. Here we have him at the age of 18 years old when he was admitted to the Ecole Polytechnique. And as general, so I don't know the, the date of this picture. The series of the articles were called Essai sur l'acte de conjecturer, and he starts with the classical definition of probability, called by him mathematical probability. But he says that this equality of probabilities is not a mathematical fact that he can prove, but it depends on the personal appreciation of each individual and says, I may have the right not to recognize the equality of two chances admitted by others. So he warns this is a very narrow, um, not very, but it's a narrow uh, definition. And so he advocates a more applicable concept that he calls vulgar probability and we nowadays can uh, identify with a degree of belief or subjective probability. So he starts the second uh, section of his work presenting his definition of betting price or la cote. So here's the definition. An individual uh, expresses the degree of probability that he attributes to the happening of an uncertain event by the fraction A over A plus B, A being the quantity he's willing to bet against B, that the event will happen. The number A over A plus B is the quotation of the event uh, for the considered individual. Then he derives some consequences. Uh, the first one is coherence. He called it le bon sein. Uh, just says that in order to avoid contradictions, uh, you have to, uh, for instance, not, asset, not uh, attach a price greater than a probability greater than one uh, to some event. And if you believe that some event is certain, you should attach probability one to it. He arrives he arrives the sum rule, so the probability for the union of two disjoint events. And as a second remark, he mentions that the mathematical probability, meaning the classical definition, when it exists is a special case of the quotes of the vulgar probability. And as the second principle, he derives the product rule and, of course, base rule. Our second character is Emile Borel. So this picture is uh, from 1932, I believe. Uh, quite a impressive character. So in 1924, he wrote this uh, review a uh, propos d'un traité de probabilité. It's about uh, Keynes' book, uh, Keynes' treatise on probability. So Keynes' view is that some probabilities could not be, com uh, some probabilities could be compared but not explicitly measured. And Borel suggests a procedure to measure probabilities that is analogous to the setting of prices of goods bought and sold in a given market. It's just the Dutch book argument. So he says, it seems that the method of betting allows in a majority of cases, of the cases, an American evaluation of probabilities which has exactly the same characters as the evaluation of prices by exchange transactions. So he was aware of some, of some problems related to bets and, and money prices. So he's, he suggests that if we do not want to take into account the attraction or the reluctance caused by bets, I would be able to offer the choice between two bets given the same advantages. 
So for instance, he says, Paul says it will rain tomorrow. I admit we agree on the precise meaning of the, this statement and offer him at his choice to receive 100 francs if his statement is true or to receive 100 francs if he obtains five or six throwing a die. In the second case, the probability of receiving 100 francs is equal to one third. If he prefers to receive 100 francs in case of his prediction is accurate, it is because he attributes to this prediction a probability greater than one third and so on. The same method applies to all verifiable sentences and allows the numerical evaluation of probabilities with precision quite comparable to the precision with which prices are evaluated. So he's trying to uh, uh, reply Keynes. So. Trying to uh, find some ideas or authors that may have influenced Etienne and Borel. Uh, first, uh, starting with Ramsey, he did not provide any, any uh, author. But Definetti mentions explicitly that this idea came to him uh, after reading the, re the book of Bertrand, so the, the same guy from the paradox. And this is a very influential book, uh, this 1889 book. And Etienne uh, was admitted to the Ecole Polytechnique, as I mentioned, and at that time, in the early 80, 1880s, uh, Bertrand and Camille Jordan took turns to teach the analysis course. Uh, and this course uh, should cover in three lessons the probability theory. We know that most probably Etienne was taught by Bertrand. Jordan, on his side, wrote in 1894, I would like to see disappear without regret from the course of analysis the three lessons that I devote to the calculus of probabilities. So this shows how uh, pure mathematicians liked probability at the time. But even his students apparently had contact with base, basic probability. There was a mandatory course, a ballistics course, taught uh, by this captain, Esprit Pascal Jouffray. And part of the syllabus was uh, about the use of probabilistic methods in ballistics. So this, uh, this paper, actually, is the publication, is uh, his lecture notes for the course. And there he labels the classical definition of probability also as mathematical probability and distinguished uh, it from the philosophical probability, in a way quite similar to Etienne. About uh, Borel, we know that uh, he graduated at the Col Normale. And at that time, we know that uh, probability was not taught at the Col Normale. We know for sure that he attended Poincaré course, Poincaré's course at the Sorbonne. So he was acquainted with Poincaré, a book on probability. It's quite similar to Bertrand. So most probably, he knew both uh, books that were very influential, at least in continental Europe, uh, by the end of the 18th and beginning of the 20th century. Of course, he was involved with uh, the developments, the first developments of measured theoretical probability. His PhD thesis uh, has the first uh, formal uh, statement of what we now call, call uh, Hein Borel theorem. These two papers published in 1905 and 1909 were very influential, also using um, measured theoretical probability. Uh, this one in 1909 has the first statement of what we now call uh, borel cantelli lemma and the use of sigma additivity. He inherited from Poincaré a double position on the meaning of probability, so sometimes he would accept the subjective definition, sometimes the objective. So in this review we, we are interested, he accepts, for instance, the, the logical view uh, proposed by Keynes that probability is relative to a body of knowledge, but also accepts the modern subjective character of probabilities, proposing the, the betting methods, betting method or method of betting discussed above or before. 
So, our main characters were both French researchers of the beginning or late 18th century, beginning of the 19th, uh, 20th century, both influenced by important scholars of the, the same period. Uh, when the French school still admitted uh, a, a dual interpretation of the meaning of probability. So Etienne was a very progressive and pragmatical man from the military. He was also involved in the creation of the French Air Force and the use, the use of tanks during World War I. And Borel was a traditional scholar, a true heir of Poincaré, accepting both objective and subjective views. Borel only suggested the argument, but Etienne presented a more formal definition, and today we can clearly recognize it as a precursor to the ideas completely formalized by Ramsey and Defnetti. As possible developments to this uh, work, we'd like to first uh, do a detailed review of the literature, but also try to understand the reasons of the described axiomatization and its timing. So we'd like, for instance, to study the parallel concept of utility and how it helped to promote this axiomatization because, for instance, Ramsey and Savage developed both concepts together. Of course, utility has also a, a very uh, old story starting with the St. Petersburg paradox and perhaps uh, before that. So here, I'll just give you some uh, sample. This is the first uh, page of uh, Etienne's uh, paper. So here's the definition of probability, the vulgar definition, vulgar probability as he's, he defined. Here he's uh, developing the product rule and before he derives the uh, base rule. And, well, just to advertise a little bit, uh, I came, came to my knowledge that Bruno De Finetti had some lecture notes. Um, of a course he gave in 1937, so I had enough time to translate it and I believe next year it will, it will be published by Cambridge and uh, not this cover, this, this is just my cover. So thank you very much. <laughs>